In this episode, we're going to start playing around with some of the hardware capabilities of the ESP32 in MicroPython. So though a lot of what I'm showing will work on other ports of MicroPython, not all ports are currently equal. Machine is a really good example of something that is different on a lot of different ports because a lot of different hardware has different capabilities. Before we get started, I wanted to just do some housekeeping from my previous video and specifically talk about the use of is compared to using equals equals. So my use case of is in my last video was actually correct in that you can use is to compare ints with each other because an int of value one is the same as an int of value one. Where is gets a little bit tricky is when we talk about equality when it comes to objects. So for instance, if I say string A equals hello world, string B equals hello world, they both have exactly the same text inside them. And if we say string A equals string B, the answer is true because it compares the contents of both of those variables. But if we say string A is string B, we get false because although the contents of those two variables are the same, the actual pointers in memory to those two locations are not the same. And the way we can find that out is if we use ID and then we put string A in there, it'll print the object ID that MicroPython uses to track that particular object. And that's the object ID there, 10654060064. If we now do ID string B, we see that it's a completely different address so those two equal each other in terms of their contents, but don't equal each other in terms of an is comparison because they're two completely different IDs. It's exactly the same as if we were building lists of things. If we say L1 equals 1, 2, 3, and we say L2 equals 1, 2, 3. If we actually do a L1 is L2, we get a false. But if we say L1 equals equals L2, we get a true because the contents is the same. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up. Let's move on to playing with some hardware. The hardware I'm using for today's video is my Tiny Pico Play Shield. You can see on the back there's a Tiny Pico that is connected to the back of the shield. What's great about the Tiny Pico Play Shield is it's got a whole bunch of buttons broken out. There are four of them. There's a reset button. There's an on and off switch if you want to power it with the JST connector on the bottom. There's a 128 by 64 OLED. And underneath the OLED, there's a three axis accelerometer, an amp, and a speaker. On top, there is a light sensor connected to IO32, and there is an LED connected to IO4. So you can pretty much do any type of hardware input or output with this, which is great. And we're going to use this for the examples today. Okay, so I'm going to jump into our shell. You've all seen me to do this a few times. I'm using a minus minus quiet on this command right now because I've updated my R shell and it dumps a whole lot of stuff to the screen when you use it now, which I don't want. Okay, I'm now going to go straight into the REPL. And let's start off just by looking at the GPIO4 again for the LED. So if you remember from before, we go from machine import pin. And we can say LED equals pin 4 and it's going to be pin dot out and we can now say LED dot on and LED dot off. Excellent. So what about PWM? Well, PWM in MicroPython is super easy to use. What's great about the ESP32 is pretty much every IO can be a PWM IO. So we're going to say from machine import PWM. Now we still have pin imported so we can keep using pin so we're going to say LED PWM equals PWM pin 4. Now this is the simplest initialization you can do. We're not telling it what the frequency or the duty cycle is going to be. It's going to use whatever the last settings on that I.O. was. Or as a default, it'll be 1 kHz and 512 for the duty cycle. So we initialize it and straight away you can see the LEDs turned on. And it is pulsing so fast that you can't see it flickering at all. So let's find out what the duty cycle and frequency is set to. So LED PWM dot duty. And that'll print out what it is. It's currently 512. I'm just going to go my up arrow and go frequency. It's currently 1 kilohertz. So we can actually set them manually here. So I can say LED PWM dot duty and set it to, I don't know, 32. Let's try 32. 
and that's going to dull down the LED as you can see. Let's just put it back to 512. Now what about the frequency LED underscore PWM dot frequency. Let's set it to, let's slow it right down. I believe the lowest it can go is 1 Hertz. So let's set it to 1 Hertz. There we go. It's going so slow now that you can see it blinking. Let's set it to 100. You can just make out on the camera that it's kind of flicking a bit. In real life I can see it just flickering. Let's set it back to 1000. What's if we want to stop PWM on that particular pin? Well, we can just type in LED underscore PWM dot D in it, which D initializes PWM on the pin and the IO turns off. Now we can actually pass the initialization values on our constructor if we want to. So I'm going to say frequency equals, we'll set it to five. Duty equals, we'll set it to 128. So it'll be a blinking LED and it'll be quite dull. And there you go. Of course, we can then go and change those values by just saying LED PWM dot frequency 1000. And that'll set it to 1000. So, PWM, super easy in MicroPython. Let's now look at the ADC where we can read values from an IO. Okay, just like the PWM class, the ADC class also lives in the machine module. So we're going to say from machine import ADC. Like PWM, the ADC class is really easy to use. And luckily for us, we have a light sensor that is connected to GPIO32. So we've got an analog input coming in from that light sensor. So we can simply say sensor equals ADC pin 32. And now we have an ADC connected to that pin. So I can just say sensor.read and it'll give me a value. Now remember from my last tutorial, when I type sensor.read, it's invoking the dunder or the, the special or magic method, which tells it to print the result out. It's exactly the same as me typing print, but we don't have to actually type print, which is great. Now you can see two different values have been shown here. If I keep doing it, we're going to get a different value every time because obviously I have lights around me right now that are lighting up my play shield and we're getting different values from the sensor every time I read it. So let's import the time module and let's make a loop and read the sensor values. So I'm going to say while true, read the value, which will print it out. And then we're going to time.sleep and I'm going to sleep for just a small amount of time. Hit enter and as you can see, I can put my finger in front of it and we get different values all the way down to zero. It's quite bright in here right now. Excellent. Control C to stop that. So that's how easy it is to use ADCs. Now we're going to look at timers. Working with timers is really easy in MicroPython and the ESP32 has both hardware and software timers. So let's have a look at how we use them. Just like our other classes so far, the timer class lives inside machine. So we're going to say from machine import pin comma timer. And we're going to create a reference to our LED again. So we're going to say LED equals pin for pin dot out. And we're going to create a reference to a timer. In this case, I'm going to call it flash equals timer. And here we pass it what the hardware timer we're going to use is, or negative one, to indicate it's going to be a software timer. I'm going to make it a hardware timer, so timer zero. Now, we're going to need a few things to make this timer useful. And the first thing is going to be is a method that we can use for a callback for the timer. There's no point having a timer that fires and doesn't do anything. So we're going to create a function, and we're going to call it flash LED. Now, this function has to actually take one value in. So when you use a callback from a timer, the callback is actually going to pass the timer to the callback. So we we'll just need to call it timer. And now we're going to say LED dot value. We're going to set the value of the LED to be not. So the binary inverse of what it currently is. So if it's currently true, it'll be false. If it's currently false, it'll be true. And just to show that working, we can now say flash LED. I'll just pass it zero for now, arbitrary value, and the LED turns on. And if I tell it to flash LED zero again, the LED turns off. 
So we can use that function now as our callback. So how do we do that? We'll say flash dot init, and we need to pass it a few things. Firstly, we need to tell it what the period is going to be. So we're going to make the period be one second. We're going to set the mode to be, in our case, periodic. We want it to constantly run. But another option is one shot. So we can make a timer that just fires once. I'm just going to type P and hit tab and it auto fills in for me. And the last thing we're going to do is set the callback equals flash LED. It's as simple as that. So we tell it how often to fire, if it fires once or forever, and what the callback's going to be. As soon as I hit enter, our LED should start flashing. How cool is that? That's a hardware timer that'll keep running forever until we tell it to stop. And the way we can tell a timer to stop, just like with our PWM, we say flash dot d init. And that deinitializes the timer. How easy is that? So now we're going to look at interrupts in MicroPython, something I hated working with in C. But once again, in MicroPython, it's easy and intuitive. So once again, we're going to from machine import pin. Now, my play shield has four input buttons, one, two, three, and four, and they are on various IOs. We're going to work with button one right now, which is on GPIO 26. So we're going to create a reference to that button, but one equals pin 26, and it's going to be pin dot input. Now, the play shield by default has all of the buttons pulled low, and when you press them, they go high. So that's all we need to do for now. And just to be able to see the state, of the button, I can just say but one dot value, and you can see that it's zero. If I do the same thing again when I'm holding the button down, it's one. Excellent. So to create an interrupt for this button, once again we're going to need some type of callback to be fired, and it, we could do it in line, but it's much easier just to have a function that gets called back. So we're going to define call it button press, and once again. We need to have a variable in here because the interrupt will actually pass back which pin was hit. So we're just going to call it pin. And inside here, we're just going to print pin and see the contents of what that's going to be. Simple as that. So now to create the interrupt, we say but1.irq and we need to pass it two things. What the trigger is going to be, trigger equals and in this case, we're going to have IRQ. We're going to do it on a falling. You can also do it on a rising edge if you want to. But in this case, we're going to trigger it after the button has been let go, not when the button is pushed. And then we're going to say handler equals, and we give it our callback. So it's going to be button press. And that's it. So now, when I push this button, it prints the value. How cool is that? How easy is that? Way easier than C++ land. So that wraps up part four of the MicroPython tutorial for ESP32. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're getting some value out of this tutorial series. I know I am. You learn things much better when you're trying to teach them. I'm definitely enjoying bringing you these videos and I'm loving MicroPython more and more every time I code in it. Until next time, bye.